I'm Catherine, and welcome back to our Espresso at Home series. In this lesson, we'll be digging a little deeper into the theory of extraction. Now, if you remember, strength and extraction are related, but they're not the exact same thing, but they pair. And there is a window of ideal extraction ranges, as well as what I'll call strength ranges or total dissolved solid ranges, both of which can be measured or calculated with special tools if you really wanna get heavy into extraction. You don't need to have any of these tools to improve your espresso at home, but talking through some of the methods will hopefully clarify extraction versus strength. So I'll start with strength because that's typically what you can actually measure first with a TDS meter. If you have one, the way it works is that you put a little drop of coffee in here and it refracts light through that and determines how much total dissolved solids there are in this, which if we assume the, the water that you used is fairly filtered, then most of that should be coffee solids. Now remember, strength is how much coffee mass is in how much water. I gave the example last lesson of an Americano. You can pull a shot and then you can mix it into a very small amount of water or you can mix it into a larger cup of water and they will this one will give you a stronger beverage than the other one will. You haven't changed your extraction at all. If you had made a shot and you had determined that there were 4.8 grams of total coffee mass in there, that's from your yields, that's your extraction, you can pour it into one or the other and you'll still have the same 4.8 grams of total coffee mass. Now, if you measure the strength on the TDS meter, this one might be 6%, this one might be 2% strength. The strength did change, but the extraction did not. A note that I'll mention again later, strength is very much a personal preference. You might like a shot, you might like a small Americano, you might like a large Americano, but extraction has a very finite range on what people actually find enjoyable. So where do I actually get these numbers? I can get them, like I said, with the TDS meter. You don't need that again, but I will demonstrate the concept all the way through just to try to make the examples clear. If you are using a TDS meter to measure, the TDS range you're typically looking for with espresso is in the seven to 12-ish strength. And again, that is your strength or your concentration, not your extraction. Most TDS meters made for coffee do show that percentage. Again, if you throw that 10% strength shot into a tall glass of water, it's now less strong. And whether you prefer a double shot straight up or a double shot in a small cup or a double shot in a big cup, that's all personal preference. There's no right strength to do espresso, but the strength is a useful start because from there you can calculate how much mass is actually in your coffee by multiplying that percentage in your shot by the beverage weight. That's the weight of the shot itself. So say you had 10% TDS in your shot, you now know that your shot weight is say 48 grams. So you would know that 10% of 48 is 4.8 grams. So it's 4.8 grams of coffee mass. And the rest, the other 90% of that shot is going to be water. Extraction is also typically given as a percentage, but it refers to the amount of coffee mass in your shot glass that gets extracted from your dose in a shot. There is also typically a suggested extraction range, and this is actually applicable to all forms of brewing coffee, not just espresso. But that target extraction rate is what most people find enjoyable to drink, and it's around 18% to 22%. Again, that's 18 to 22% of the dry coffee in your dose should end up dissolved into what you are drinking. We'll talk a little bit more later on why you don't want to extract more or less in a later lesson, but what's important to note is that espresso is not a more extracted coffee. It's actually a stronger coffee, which is why diluting it in an Americano works. So with the example I gave before, a 48 gram shot with a 10% strength, you have a shot that has 4.8 grams of coffee in it. You no longer care about the weight of the shot. Now, all you care about is how much coffee solids were in there. And so we've determined that it was 4.8 grams of coffee. For extraction, what we're interested in is that compared to our dry dose. So let's say our dry dose was 24 grams. 4.8 grams that got dissolved out, out of 24 grams is 0.2 or 20%. So we have 20% extraction. These specific numbers I'm saying are just made up so that you can hopefully pretty easily follow the math with 10% strength, 20% extraction. These aren't your targets or anything. They're just reasonable numbers that are hopefully pretty easy to follow so that you can understand a little better. The simple thing to take away, if none of that made sense, is to just remember that extraction is coffee mass related to your dose and strength is coffee mass related to the size of your shot or the ultimate beverage you brew. 
as I mentioned last lesson, it gets more complicated because over the course of one single shot, extraction goes up and strength goes down. They have an inverse relationship. And part of that reason is because coffee only has so much mass that can actually be dissolved. Imagine you take some coffee and freeze it into ice cubes. You have little coffee frozen ice cubes. You can pour a bunch of water over it. And the more coffee you melt, the more coffee flavor you get. But once the coffee ice has entirely melted, once all of that coffee has dissolved, all you're doing is adding more water. Coffee solubles though, the parts of the coffee bean that dissolve are not exactly like ice because they don't all dissolve at the same rate. Some parts of the coffee are harder to dissolve than others. So the end of a shot actually takes more water to extract the same amount of dissolved coffee mass as the early part of a shot. So as you push more and more and more water through your grounds, you'll actually be extracting more, but more and more slowly. So I have a graph and if you have the download, there should be a picture of this there too. If we imagine we're starting to pull a shot and we're able to actually weigh the shot as we go. And we're also able to measure the TDS with as we go. We're just gonna pretend we can do that. So at 10 seconds into a shot, you might've dissolved 2.4 grams of your coffee mass into the shot glass in those first 10 seconds and say that this whole shot weighs 10 grams. That liquid is 2.4 grams of coffee out of the total 10 grams. So it's 24% coffee mass. That's strength, that's concentration. That's a very strong little splash of coffee. And the extraction at this point is only 10% because we're at 2.4 grams out of the 24 gram dose. At 20 seconds, you might have dissolved four grams into your shot glass, but now the total shot weighs 20 grams. Now your liquid down here is only 20% coffee mass. That went down from the 24% to 20% strength, but the overall extraction still went up to about 16% because more of the coffee solids have moved down into the cup. If you keep going and you finally reach your 30 second shot and say now you've dissolved that 4.8 grams of coffee from your 24 gram dose into your 48 gram shot. The liquid in the shot is now only 10% strength. It's 10% coffee solids, but the extraction has still continued to go up and now you have a 20% extraction. Your total extraction of your coffee went up from 10% to 16% to 20% and your strength went down from 24% down to 20% all the way down to 10% coffee mass over the course of that shot. Again, those numbers are just made up to hopefully be easy to calculate so you can check my math and hopefully you can understand where those bits of information came from. But again, the takeaway is over any given shot, as you continue to extract more, you have a less strong shot. So what if you want a stronger shot? You still want to extract your 4.8 grams out of your 24 gram dose. You don't want a 48 gram shot. Instead, you want a 36 gram shot, but you want to keep all 4.8 grams of TDS because remember strength is relative. You can have a stronger shot, but extraction has that finite range on what is considered good. So how would we do that? We want to reach the same extraction percentage, but we have to change the extraction rate. We have to extract faster. So the factors of extraction, you can change how much you extract from your grounds through a variety of factors, some of which are heat, pressure and grind level, which influences both surface area and contact time. There are some other factors in extraction for other brew methods, but they aren't really applicable to espresso. So those are the ones that I'm going to focus on right now. Firstly, heat. Heat is not a variable on all home machines, so I'll cover it briefly in case it is helpful. More heat will allow more extraction, all other variables remaining the same. Imagine the ice cube example again, hotter water will melt those cubes faster. It's the same is true for dissolving your coffee solids. However, I would typically only recommend changing this if you cannot increase your extraction through other means. Maybe you have to go even further with a much less soluble coffee, say a very light roast or a really dense bean. I'll cover more on coffee solubility in a later lesson and we'll talk about heat again when I get there. But know that this is not the first factor you'll want to change and it might not be a factor you can change at all depending on your machine. Pressure is also not a variable that most home machines can change, probably even fewer than for heat, but more pressure yields more extraction. 
Espresso only works because it gets so strong because the brew method is very, very pressurized. You would never be able to get as strong of a coffee without that high pressure. If your home machine is a lever machine or a decent or something like that, then you can actually change the pressure profile. And if that's the case, I just recommend going to a web forum that will go into all kinds of detail and give you all kinds of information about pressure profiles. I'm not gonna cover them now because they're not that helpful to beginners and they're not available to most home machines either. And now we continue to one that everyone can actually control and that's grind size. As I said, grind size changes both how much surface area is exposed to water and influences how long the water is in contact with the espresso. The finer the grind, the more surface area, and the more surface area, the more extraction can happen. If you think back to the coffee ice cubes, if you have a bunch of tiny ice cubes, they have a lot of surface area, they'll melt really, really quickly. And if you have big ice cubes, they melt a lot more slowly, they give away their coffee less quickly. So if you have a bunch of tiny grounds, the same thing, they have a lot of surface area and they give off their solubles really fast. Do you wanna pause real quick so I can help? Since there's like five people here. Okay. Hey, what can I get started for you? I oh, you all set? What can I get started for you? Um, hey, I'm actually lit. The fineness of the ground also influences how quickly the water can flow through the grounds, which in turn determines how long water is in contact with the coffee grounds. So I'll talk about contact time real quick. In an immersion method, you probably know you can keep the grounds or if you're making tea, when it's tea, it's always an immersion method. You can leave your coffee or tea in the water longer and you get a stronger drink. Espresso still has that factor. The water is in contact with the grounds and the longer it's in contact with the grounds, the more extraction that can happen. However, that contact time cannot be directly controlled the way it is with an immersion method because espresso is a flow. But grind size does influence that factor. Water will flow much more quickly through larger grind sizes than through smaller ones. Thinking on a large scale, water flows much more quickly through big rocks than through sand. Less contact time means less extraction. So grind size has this one-two punch of you're changing both the surface area and changing the flow rate at the same time, which is part of why good espresso grinders have to have very small differences in grind settings. You have to be able to adjust the grind by a very small amount. One more unfortunate complication with grind size is that when you get too fine, you can get clumping, which if you don't properly redistribute the grounds, it can act like a coarser grind than it is. And when you get to a point with fineness, you might start having really heavy channeling because the flow rate has been so restricted and water just has to punch its way through that puck like the Kool-Aid man. And now the rest of the water comes through that Kool-Aid shaped hole and you lose all of the benefits of the extra surface area because only that tiny little tunnel is getting extracted. And you have too much of this one part of the coffee and you get bitterness. So evenness also plays a huge role in the contact time and flow rate. Our next lesson is gonna get into evenness and grind um, as well as puck prep, which will increase the evenness in that extraction um, in much more detail. So stay tuned. You can find the link to that next video in the bio. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. You can also find other classes at sagebrushcoffee.com. Thanks again for watching. I'm Catherine, and I hope you have a great day.